Hello, this is John Spielman with the uh, audio-visual version of my latest column, which is coming out, well, tomorrow as I speak, on January the 17th. Sunday, January the 17th. <coughs> um, I've just had a fight with my uh, <laughs> broadcasting software, which had somehow defaulted to a setting where there was feedback on the sound. I hope that now it's fine. I think I'd be hearing awful rumbling if it weren't. So I apologise if there are any problems. Actually, I'll turn off. I don't need this sound on here. Now, let me just check. I am actually broadcasting, and I am. I'm recording. And this is... I've called this Australian Rules, which is just a joke. So what um, I wanted to write about creeping moves. I thought, creeping, creepy crawlies. Where are the most creepy crawlies in the world? As we call, it. I mean that's obviously not a technical term, and I when I checked just now, I was unsurprised to confirm that Australia is the continent with the greatest variety of venomous animals. Many of these are creepy crawlies. That's just sort of spiders and yuckety th things we don't like. I mean, I'm sure they don't like us either. It's not not that there's anything intrinsically bad about them, but we're just a bit um, in, indisposed towards each other. And it was in connection with creepy crawliness that I was looking. Looking since today, we examine that most toxic of concepts, the creepy crawly, or as people actually say, creeping move. And I've said this is typically a tiny move with the queen, which moves a tiny one square, and suddenly the position's completely different. And um, I um, I think that there's a game by Smyslov, which has a creeping move, where the queen moves one square somewhere near to c5 and it causes catastrophe immediately to the opponent. And I cannot find it. I, it might not be Smyslov. If readers can stick that in the comments, I will be eternally grateful. Um, so, I've got what I did do, when I searched for creepy crawly moves, creepy, creeping moves, I found a nice game by Spassky, in which Spassky beat Korchnoi. It was in their first candidates match, candidates final match in 68, in Kiev, and this is one that Spassky won. The very famous one is Belgrade 77, after Viktor Lvovich had already defected, and that was an absolute humdinger of a match. There was stuff, did Spassky wear reflective glasses, got up from the board, he won four games in a row, Korchnoi no doubt thought that there were death rays or something coming towards him. Who knows, and eventually um, Korchnoi won that match, but it was one of those matches where, you know, if you wanted to make a film about it, you could certainly, uh, Dr. Zhukar, uh, was certainly, if not, when was, uh, Baggio was 78, wasn't it? <coughs> so it was before Baggio, but already, um, there was a lot of fuss spotting going on. Anyway, so I'm going to start with that. I'm going to go into my chess space. I've moved column 138 as it is down here, and as I said, I called it Australian Rules. Australian Rules is a type of sort of rugby, American football type game. I don't know what the rules are. Uh, it's certainly not soccer. Um, now, let's do this. We've got five games. Um, basically, I've got Game with a Creeping Move. Karpov Spassky is another game with creeping moves. I've got a couple of games of collateral rook, collineal, excuse me, collinear rook moves, where rooks move along a line, but not quite as far as, as you're expecting, or not to where you're expecting. And then I've got a game with I played with Kasparov, where he played some rook moves I just hadn't seen. I mean, luckily they weren't deadly, but they were better than the moves I was expecting. So first we've got Spassky against Korchnoi, and... This is a King's Indian, and I, I, I mean, I had a little look at this. I mean, I don't play this line as white, certainly not as black, and I wondered what the theory is, and it looks to me as though um, knight takes b3 is the most common. Actually, c5 is what you want to play, and apparently this sacrifice isn't that bad, according to my engine. Which, if it isn't that bad, then it basically 
is going to be why people maybe why people don't do this much now. Uh, my engine is saying not to there to go to e6 and saying plus equals only, and saying basically well, this is all right-ish for black apparently. <coughs> I mean it's completely unobvious to me, but um, I mean at this position I can well believe is okay for black. Um, because, I mean, there seems to be a problem with the f4 pawn. I can't really see what you're going to play here. Um, maybe you have to go back and then take on d5 or something. Well, things happen. All right. I can believe very much that this is okay. And that, therefore, I don't know why he didn't go a3 previous move, actually. Um, is a3 a move that is considered? There's something really wrong with a3. Maybe just takes and that's to stop rook b4 or bishop f3. Uh, I suppose he's going to go rook b4, rook a7, is he? Uh, what does it actually go? Bishop a7, queen d7, bishop f2. I'm just playing the moves. And knight takes f4, bishop c5 is winning some material. So rook takes f4, knight takes d5, and it claims this is plus equal, which is a reasonable claim. Um, okay. Um, but anyway, that I imagine that if that line is playable for black, then that's maybe why white doesn't often do this. They normally go queen d2, I think. Normally. What do they play nowadays in this position? Do they go rook c1? Do they go a3? Do they go... Queen d2 is most common, um, and I'm just going to say is mu is much more common. Common nowadays. So now, what I did think I was going to try not to correct spelling mistakes because I think it's very tedious for you to watch me correcting my appalling typing. Anyway, he took. And I think AB3 is a bit more common. But I don't know. This this is an interesting line. Queen E7 is recommended by Houdini. You see, I see a Houdini with a, a, a Houdini and I, I get upset, which is like, which is ridiculous, really. And if Queen B6, Bishop B7. Queen A3. Courtshaw ended up very passive in this game. Um, I said F6 looks like the move of a man who really isn't happy. I think that's pretty clear he's not a happy bunny at this moment. If he goes d5, then there's some sort of bashing on d5, as you'd expect. And this is good for white. Very good for white. We should, well, rook takes bishop, takes, takes, c6. And you're actually going to trap the rook in a minute with king d2, aren't you? So it's going to be the end of the universe completely. Bishop h6, you just go king c2. So this is plus minus. Okay, so they played some moves. And obviously this is now clearly better for white. Why is it clearly better for white? He's a pawn down, he's got the better pawn structure, he's got the H file. He's it's really uncomfortable for black on so many levels. Um, I haven't analysed this game particularly carefully. Um, now, this is the point of the game. Here, if knight d5, black can play queen e6, and he's clearly worse, but he's fighting. And Spassky found this beautiful little creeping move, queen b6. And what it does is it means that after knight d5, queen e6, you can just play bishop c5. And the queen would be protected, which changes the tactics. And what did Kutschmann do here? So that's what happened. And if you play knight d5, queen d5, you're just probably going to lose the ending eventually. Because you are a pawn down. And you have the worst king, by the way. The fact you played f6, 7 to f6 makes your king quite a lot worse than white's. Anyway, they played some more moves. And... Check. And here he played king h7. Clearly, king g8 would have been a better move. Though, I mean, probably, I don't know... King g8, queen takes e2, knight takes e2, just play chess, yeah. Uh, so this is question mark, yeah. King g8, we'll put this variation. King here, takes, takes, check. 
taking h7, rook to there. And clearly you are winning as, as white. Um, we'll put a plus and minus. Though in a game black could fight a bit. But anyway, he went king h6 and this allowed a pretty finish. Splat! Queen h6 check and we'll give it an exclam. And so the question is, is this a more interest, a prettier move than queen b6? And it depends on your aesthetic. Um, I would say not. Queen h6 is just a good bish bash boss move that wins. Whereas queen b6 is a beautiful... Uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of uh, assassin's weapons, I don't know. Um, anyway, this is some sort of blunderbuss or, you know, some sort of heavy machine gun. And the other thing is a small needle. You just poke into the guy and he's not looking. Uh, and it's a very pretty move. Queen h6. Obviously, if king takes rook h1 is checkmate. That was the first one. Then I thought Karpov Spassky. This is one of my favourite games. Um, it's a Scheveningen. I think I'd get executed in Holland with that pronunciation. At least I'm trying. Uh, that may not make sense. I think they used Scheveningen as a test for whether people were Germans or Dutch during the Second World War, I believe. Um, okay. Um, Karpov later played this a lot against Kasparov, of course, and they're their World Championship matches. That's perhaps, I don't know if it's a good move or not. It, it induces a4, and these b4 and b5 are both weakened. And Spassky, I think, thought he was okay now. Probably e5 is a mistake, I'm guessing. Right, so we got to this position. So black has an active knight on b4. He has some dark squares he can try to get control of. If he get the dark squared bishops off, in principle, that'd be a very good thing. But white has the better pawn structure. At the moment the knight on c3 is dominated by the pawn on c6 but um, if you can get the knight to move round then it has a beautiful square on c4. And Kapov played just some gorgeous chess in this game. He played queen f1 first, controls f4, prepares queen c4 sometimes and just h3. Uh, I'm sure, is he really trying to stop knight, knight g4? Anyway, he did it. Knight d7, bishop g4. And actually, he now... I think h5 may not have been a great move. I have annotated this a few times. Queen c4, hitting f7. Moves the rook out of the way to hit the queen, moves the rook over. Playing, and bishop c5 was possible. This is better. Rook f d8, knight b1. This is the really great move, knight b1. He realises that black wants to exchange rooks in order to get pressure against c2. Knight b1 defends c2 backwards with the, with the queen and prepares to bring the knight out to a better square, to c4. In fact, it goes to f3, I think, doesn't it? Just a brilliant move, knight b1. That's not a creeping move, that's just a... Peculiar pour mio sauté and uh, excuse my I'm sorry French French um, listeners viewers I apologise for that King King H two threatened G three another little move threatened G three which would win on the spot at the moment because F seven would drop off C three kicks the knight away and now a really another really great move um, Karpov realised that it was going to be more unpleasant for Black with two pairs of rooks on the board so he played that. That, I think, is a creeping move, and it's vicious. It's an absolutely vicious blow. Um, defends f7, knight comes out, goes back, knight goes to there, hitting e5, f6. I think, I don't know if you should have tried bishop b6 or something, but I think, I think you can take on e5 in lots of positions, and the tactics are okay for you. Uh, all right. He went f6, which is horribly weakening. Now he takes the d-line. And now he takes the d-line again. And now he tees up to punch the guy in the face. 
as it were. Sorry, I'm using rather violent metaphors today. Perhaps it's the lockdown is making me grumpy or making me more aggressive than usual. Rook takes d8. More of that aggressive. And he resigned because after Rook takes d8, Bishop e7 is splat. And this is an absolutely beautiful game. Um, we'll look at the, the really nice moves. Um... That's a beautiful move, might be one. Absolutely gorgeous move. Maybe we should see if I have those Queen G5 or something previously. That's king H2 is just so vicious. That's not really a creeping move. It's a normal move with the king. I mean, the king can't go any further. But it does threaten G3. Rook E2 is... As good a move as knight b1, I would say. Karpov was really on top of his game, this one. And the rest is not that interesting, really. I mean, you know, you're going to kick the guy in, you kick the guy in. But a beautiful game. Lovely game. Now, I've got a couple of collinear moves. They're not... I haven't annotated these games very seriously. I happened to see this one. It was in Hastings, the Hastings tournament, which David Howell won very impressively a week or so ago and he beat Mickey and um, it's a Catalan this is the one I play myself quite a lot now the big guys play it then I suppose there's lots of theory which may or may not be a good thing because I wasn't doing that well with it so I guess it's a good thing that there is um, because they will show me how to do this I had a game with this and I can't remember it was against, it was in the Bundesliga. Uh, now I've started talking, I suppose I'm going to have to show it. Uh, let me find it. Um, who was it? It was against, um, I'm going to use my key to find a Catalan. That should do it. On a good day, I have my own key, which is not uh, Catalan. No, maybe I don't. Ah, I'm sorry. It was in a Bundesliga and I've lost it. Um, uh, if we put BL, that may work as well. It was against Peter Cech, was it? No, it wasn't. It was against... Vatava, I think. Is that Vatava? No, that was that was Vatava and Peter Cech. Is it not CP of Peter Cech? It's Pavel Cech, possibly. Uh, here we go. Uh, let's delete all commentary. I'm just going to copy it in. Delete all commentary. No, I'm not going to save it. Obviously, I like my commentary, but I'm going to stick this in. Uh, so the guy went, yeah. E5 here. Um, this was, is he Pavel check? Um, and I drew this, actually at one point I was worse. Anyway, just interesting, because I thought this was harder than I expected. I expected to have some advantage and I didn't. Um, okay. So the interesting move to, from this column's point of view here is that David Howell played rook d3 and I think if rook takes knight takes probably is quite a good thing to play knight bishop c6 but rook d3 is quite an annoying move and it's not uh, it's theory actually there are quite a lot of games in fact but it's not a move I knew I hadn't seen here we are so quite a number of them uh, 11 games and it's a collinear move and it's better than taking uh, Mickey took, I don't like taking, I think that before is probably a better move. Um, and, okay, this is, this, you've got the hanging pawns, but they seem to be fairly well protected in this position. You've got enough defence that nothing is really going on. And David got some advantage, and then he won with a nasty trick. Really nasty trick. Mickey blundered with bishop b3. I think there are... And this happened, this filthy trick. If you don't play Rook takes Rook, you're completely lost. And now White gets a queen. And White won quite easily. Um, 
we got eventually to this position. So um, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to put a little note. I had this in the Bundesliga Liga, way back when chess was still played. Still played over the board. Board. The board. Later in the game. To, to being in trouble. A couple of moves. Uh, uh, where was it? It was somewhere around about here. I mean, okay. I think somewhere around about here there was a moment. Maybe you can double roots, can he, and do something? I can't remember. Anyway, um, there we are. That's that. Then I've got um, another one of these. I've got a game, Maxudlu Carlson. It was a blitz game. It wasn't there a blitz match before. Maxudlu held him for a few games and then got absolutely splatted. This was in the chess.com thing. Is that the Blitz International? And I'm not in... I mean, OK, this is the great opening, isn't it? Presumably at this stage, once Black gets all his pieces out, he's at least equal. Um, Carson started doing his stuff, pushing all his pawns. Now, the interesting thing... Here, uh, the engine says that it's actually okay, but Magsudu played knight f6, and I'm sure he expected rook takes rook, and Magnus played rook to there. And of course, as soon as you see that move, you think, oh, Gurk, that's unpleasant for white, because white can't really take it, because then, you know, the pawn is going to come in, and it completely changes the position. I was commentating at the time, I think, and I didn't notice, which is, well, it's possible not to notice this move. And I think that Parham probably didn't in the Blitz game. And Magnus later won the game rather nicely. And it was just the collinearity of the moves. I mean, it, Magnus won this very easily, actually. It all went completely to pot within a few moves. He did resign a move or two later. Just horrible. And OK, that was that. And then I had a game with Kasparov. Uh, my score, basically I lost, I think I drew more than I lost against Kasparov. I never beat him in a proper game. I beat him in a rapid play game once. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I drew a certain number of games. I wasn't, I enjoyed playing him. I thought it was fun. And in this one, the interesting thing, I'm going to turn it round to be from my point of view, <coughs> was at the Belfour World Cup. Um... Well, the interesting thing, okay, I played this line and I just looked it up now and Queen C2 apparently this is the A line. I don't think they play G4 very often. Does anybody play G4? I doubt it. Queen A4 check by the way, you just go Bishop D7 and repeat moves. So that doesn't help. And this is, well it's a position. And I think if White can get his pieces out, he might get to a plus equals. But obviously White's quite, quite... What I've said is, variation starting Queen C2. I suppose the white, if White can stabilise the possession, then the two bishops may give him an edge. But Black is pretty active at the moment. And I should add, actually, um, White King is awkward in the short run. He's awkward in the short run at least, which I think is a fair comment. Right. 
Uh, we played some more moves. Of course, he doesn't take yet. Just to, um, played some more moves. He had this idea. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. It does double my pawns, which and uh, and okay, Black's pawn structure is slightly weakened. There is an e6 square, but everything else is fine about the position. For an opening to get against Kasparov, it wasn't a bad one, I think. Knight a6, I'm going to c7, which is going to cover e6. That's a playable position. Um, a6 is nice. I kicked him, and that's a good move, of course, because he can't take in d6. So I get my queen to a good square. And I think I'm more or less equal here. I don't know. The engine may think I'm slightly worse still. So now I'm getting counterplay. And this is a bit over ambitious, I think. Uh, have I given some line with d5, c5, h4? Might be a little bit better. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's a long time ago, this game, of course. h4, starting to get active. I think if g4, he goes, he starts... I'm going to have a big problem with my pawns. So I took it. And I believe that I had not seen the move rip d4 here. So I must have thought I had the advantage. I can't imagine what else I thought he was going to play. Um, but I, I think I was surprised a bit. Or I, maybe I saw it late. Yeah, I mean, I think I thought queen h1 or something. I just didn't see rip d4 using the hook on e3. Now if you could take and play knight d5 then you might have a very good position. But of course, in between the cup and the whatever, there is the whatever. And if you take, you can take and play queen e6. I've, I've said rook takes um, d4 is bad. I played rook c2. No, I played rook e2, sorry. Nick this pawn. That's the only move. Because if queen f5, queen c6, knight f6, this is a big advantage for white. White's got control now. Rook is very bad on e2. Found that move. Check here, here. Uh, bishop d6 doesn't work because of queen d4. Bishop takes rook, queen d7 with the advantage. So bishop b5, h6, rook h1, and a3, it's, let's say, I don't know. Rook f2, a3. And here, actually, I've got the advantage at this point. Queen c2, rook to there. Queen g6, I've given it two question marks. That's disappointment, isn't it? Uh, because, you know, it's not such a stupid move to... I don't know, rook h6 is, is it a threat at the moment? Apparently I can play queen f5. And if queen e7, king g8 is clearly better for black, says, says me, says the engine. And I think I'd missed this one. I'm pretty sure I'd missed this move. Um, which is again using the hook on e3. Pawn on e3. And I'm just interested in the moves you see or don't see. Um, I, I'm still okay here. Let's sum it up. B4. And here I offered a draw and Kasparov accepted. Because after, if you let me take on a3, you're going to be very loose to the king. And a4, it says, maybe. But um, I'm not sure if a4. What do I say down here? Um, queen takes b4. And, you know, even Kasparov isn't going to try to win that. I mean, if it was a rook ending, then whoever moves first. Actually, white's king is in a worse square than black, so who knows? Without the queens on, I have no idea what the assessment is. Uh, I might actually, I think I'm going to find out. Um, I'm going to save this. I'm going to get this position. I'm going to take this off the board. Uh, this off the board. And I'm going to do that. And ask its sublime majesty and it says white is better. Which I'm really not sure. Presumably it's claiming after b4 white's clearly better. Which, I mean, I uh, 1.17. Interesting, I have no idea. Okay, I'm not going to save that. Right, people. Well, I, I hope you've enjoyed this today. Um, 
And, um, right, well, there will be another column at the beginning of February at some point. Uh, whenever the first Sunday of February is, February is, which appears to be the 3rd of February, I suppose. I, I, don't, I didn't know that, but I do now. So, um, enjoy Vacanze, which is starting today as I, as I speak. And I'll see you in uh, two and a half weeks, or three weeks will it be, I suppose. Is it 17... Um, what are, what are we today? Sixteen twenty three thirty, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, sorry, am I talking nonsense? Is it actually? It's the third of January, and it is the seventh of February. What am I talking about? That made sense after adding twenty one to whatever we were. So I will see you on February the seventh. Cheers. Bye.